On the agenda tonight, we're going to be taking a look at Engelbert Humperdinck, and he's going to be performing Love Me With All Of Your Heart. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So this performance is just under three minutes in length. So we'll watch it all the way through and then we'll get into the analysis afterwards. We will have the pitch monitoring software on screen as well as I have isolated the vocal, but we'll jump into that during the analysis. Let's see how Engelbert gets on. <laughs> me this that you give me all your kisses every winter every summer And there we have it. What a live vocal that is. When you're listening to this live performance, you can almost imagine that it is the record playing, and it's, that it's been done in the studio, and just back with the great singers, what you got live was just them like they sang in the studio. It was just one and the same. And this is a great example of that. Having the vocal ability to be so spot on pitch wise, but to have all of the control, all of the expression. And what I love about this performance is that you know it's live because of some of the plosives that we get on the mic, which is where the air hits the mic. Some of the S's are a little bit clipped because they're a little bit you know, aggressive in the studio, you'd have a de which makes the S's softer when you're listening to the recorded version of the song. So let's jump back to the beginning of the performance and we will have the isolated vocal really high in the mix to hear it more clearly and just see what's going on with Engelbert's voice. Love me with all of your heart, that's all I want, love. I mean, with this first vocal phrase, you can see the accuracy we've got going on here with the C sharp four. 
absolutely bang on pitch wise but this is going to be the same throughout the whole performance and you can tell just by listening to it that it is pitch perfect but as we go back just here the d4 and this vibrato that is so even so consistent but we will get into that in a second because i'm going to point out something that changes with engelbert's vibrato throughout the performance but let's listen on love me with all of your heart or not at all just promise me this that you give me all your kisses every winter every summer every fall when we are far apart oh, when you're near me love me with all of your heart as i love you I'm just going to jump in here. It's always the case that when you're listening to great singers, their isolated vocals just sound great by themselves. They don't actually need any backing going on. But what I want to point out about Engelbert's voice, when he's lower in his range, you can see this vibrato, you know, at points, we're covering three semitones. So it is quite wide. And when we take it back and we listen to it in slow motion, you can hear the range that we're covering with the vibrato. It is quite dramatic. This was another thing about his performances at this time, but just his voice in general that he has, is this range that flies under the radar because in this performance we've got about an octave and a half's worth of range and in a lot of other performances where I've looked at a similar kind of music and I know that people will refer to it as you know crooning or <laughs> that kind of thing but this is where Engelbert's different because his voice covers a wider range than you would expect. This kind of sound isn't just singing in a really comfortable range and always being in that baritone space and maybe at the most covering an octave. We're going well beyond that. So he's got the range of someone who can sing so many different styles. So I think it is a little bit of a disservice to his voice to refer to him as one thing or the other thing. He's like so many great vocalists that are just great vocalists and they can sing so many different styles, so many different genres, especially when you add in the range that they've got available to them. But I did get a bit distracted with range. What I wanted to point out was the change in vibrato that we have. And on the screen here is a really good example of lower in Engelbert's range. He has a wider vibrato, but as he ascends, his vibrato becomes tighter. It covers less pitch. The effect of covering less pitch means that it's going to sound more intense and more excitable. There's going to be a different emotion that you attribute to the vibrato that Engelbert uses on his high notes than the emotion you get from his low notes. And this is a huge thing because when you're listening to a high note, if that high note is just higher in pitch. It's going to affect you emotionally anyway. That's why in songs, the singer always starts lower than where they end up in the chorus or by the end of the song. Because of that emotional reaction, they will elicit from the audience. So if you add into that, not only that dramatic change in pitch, as I've said, an octave and a half, but put in a different vibrato that is even more intense, that's just going to make that high note hit the audience even harder emotionally. It's just something that a great singer might do this naturally. And this is something that Engelbert is definitely doing naturally. He's not keeping his vibrato tighter on his higher notes intentionally. It's the emotion that he's feeling at the time that he's communicating through the song. And it just happens to have this effect on his voice to be even more intense. So we'll watch it again with the isolated vocal. Keep your eye on these vocal lines on the right hand side of the screen to see when we go lower, we get wider lines. And when we get higher, they are thinner, they're tighter. Love me with all of your heart, that's all I want, love. Love me with all of your heart, or not at all. 
Just promise me this That you give me All your kisses Every winter Every summer Every fall I mean, this is a great example. I mean, that whole passage that we just listened to. When we're up at the D4 and now at the E4, we're not even going a semitone higher or a semitone lower when you compare that to three semitones lower in his range earlier on. Just to give you guys a visual representation of the range that we've got going on, when I'm mentioning about this E4 that we hit with this tighter vibrato, when we go over to our ranges, you can see that that, actually let me take this back so that we can get some of these notes down here which I mean there you go straight away we've got the octave beneath well, one octave lower E3 we've got the F sharp 3 so when we go over to the piano here we've got our F sharp 3 here and we've got our E3 down here and the E4 is all the way up here and you can see that we're getting into the male tenor range and these other notes that we just had with the F sharp that's in the baritone range. So this is pretty much where most crooners are going to be living, just in this space here. And we've got this extension. We will be actually going higher than the E4. We'll be getting up to, I think, maybe a G4, maybe the G sharp 4. So we're getting to the top end of the male tenor range. And that's going to be later on in the song because we have a key change in this song as well. So this is the thing that Engelbert has this extra half octave that you wouldn't usually get. Most singers, most crooners will be down here, just dead set in this baritone range. We'll get back into the performance. We'll just listen to the isolated vocal for a little bit longer. We've just had our key change, by the way, which means that every note now is gonna be a semitone higher than it was, including the high note, so this is where Engelbert's range just comes into its own because he's got the ability to have this key change and still nail the top note. Love me with all of your heart as I love you. Don't give me your love for a moment or an hour. Love me always. And there we had it, the G sharp four rather than the G four. Let's go back over to our piano because we have the G sharp four, which is what we just had, that top note. And you can see that we're just a semitone off the top end of the male tenor range. And when I said that we were going higher than the E four, we most certainly have really impressive from a range standpoint, but it's the quality of the tone and the support, because this is all in chest voice, so Engelbert isn't ducking any notes here. He's belting this out, but has so much control, still applies the vibrato, and hits it with conviction. <laughs> and that's why you get that emotional impact, because you don't have to worry about the singer here not hitting notes, or having to compromise on notes because they can't quite reach them. He's just all over this. The other thing is, on the original, I think it's quite a lot slower and I do like the fact that the tempo is being pushed here and that's always something that tended to happen live but I'm not sure whether this was performed with a uh, live orchestra or whether it's just a backing track that they made in the studio this is something that they tended to do was to make a backing track for live performances and the tempo would be pushed because for live you want a little bit more energy in the performance and certainly here, I think it's quite dramatic, the change. If you go back and listen to the original record, I might actually be able to play this very quickly, hopefully without getting a copyright strike, but have a listen to this. Not at all. Just promise me this. So a dramatic difference. Let's jump back into this performance. Love me with all of your heart as I love you. Don't give me your love. 
So you instantly feel that pushed tempo. When I play it at the beginning and compare it to the record, we can notice something that is rare that you don't really find. Have a listen. Love me with all of your heart. And now back to the record. Love me with all of your heart. So on the record, we are a lot slower, but we are a semitone lower. This is something that generally happens with live performances where in the studio the vocalist has sung it a little bit higher and pushed their voice because they can in the studio they can have a rest if they want to maybe come in the next day uh, but great singers generally just nailed it in one take so it is rare to see that Engelbert live took it a semitone higher so it meant that his top note is going to be even higher than the studio therefore it's got even more emotion in there we know it's going to have a tighter vibrato as well and when you start pushing the tempo that's why this live performance sounds so much more dramatic and has so much more energy in it than the record because we're pushing tempo and we are a semitone higher, which means it's going to have more emotional impact, especially when you get to the top note of the song, because that's going to be higher than you ever heard on the record. But I do want to cover a bit of Engelbert's early career to cover his name and all the things that happened actually in the late 50s is when he started recording he signed with Decca Records and at that point he was known as Jerry Dorsey because he was born Arnold George Dorsey and unfortunately he didn't get a lot of sales at that point and he did appear on TV but it just didn't result in anything I think that the conscription to the British Army probably got in the way of that in the 50s this is where something becomes relevant actually that I was going to mention in the analysis video but I didn't about the sound of Engelbert's voice and the sound of Tom Jones's voice when they get into a chest voice note that's slightly higher up but they kind of release into it they might even have a slight cry in the voice as they get into that note you get a really similar tone produced from Engelbert's voice as you get with Tom Jones's voice and anyway the whole point of me mentioning this is because Engelbert's ex-roommate Gordon Mills at the time in the mid 60s was managing a singer called Tom Jones and he knew that Engelbert was trying to get somewhere and at this point it was Jerry <laughs> that's what Engelbert was known as but Gordon said to Jerry at the time I think you need a name change. This is something that is going to make you stand out more and could be good for your career. So it was at that point that he changed his name to Engelbert Humperdinck. And this was after the 19th century German composer of operas. So a, a name that maybe not a lot of people know, but certainly a name that's going to stick out. So in 1966, he went over to Belgium and had a lot of success there in singing contests. I believe that he won one of those. And he traveled to Spain to meet up with songwriter Bert Keimfurt. And Bert had a few songs for him, uh, Spanish Eyes, Strangers in the Night and Wonderland by Night. <laughs> and he recorded all three of these songs, but Engelbert thought The Strangers in the Night was one of those songs that he wanted to release as a single. But unfortunately, he couldn't do that because Strangers in the Night had already been chosen by Frank Sinatra. Thankfully, all was not lost because in 1967 is when Engelbert released his song, Release Me, which was a monster hit here in the UK, getting to number one, keeping the Beatles off the top spot. So it gives you an idea of how popular that song was. I believe selling 85,000 copies at the height of its popularity, it was a huge hit worldwide, got to number four in the USA. So those sales, I mean, it does add up because it's such a huge hit. And that really started the ball rolling for Engelbert. And he just went from strength to strength. So he's just had huge success throughout the decades. He's got one of those careers that has spanned such a vast amount of time but has that longevity to his performances and his voice because he's still performing now so if you want to go out and check out an Engelbert performance you can do because I know that he's performing in October but just the quality of the voice when it's isolated 
it just sounds great on its own and that's always the mark of a great singer and Engelbert Humperdinck certainly is one of those. But thank you guys for suggesting this video for me to take a look at. As always, keep those suggestions coming in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!